are excited to have a video submission from Mr. Sudhansh Mani. Mr. Mani retires from Railway Service of Mechanical Engineering as General Manager, Integral Coach Factory, Chennai. With around four decades of professional experience, he has also served as Railway Advisor in Embassy of India, Berlin. For three years, interacting with railway systems of advanced countries worldwide on behalf of IF. Mr. Mani led the Train 18 Vande Bharat Express project, India's first indigenous semi-high speed train from concept to delivery. His journey leading to the Train 18 project is recounted in his bestseller book, My Train 18 Story. He has authored six more books. Mr. Mani is also engaged in multiple activities serving on the advisory to the editorial board of leading railway and metro journals, keynote, standalone speaker and panelist on platforms such as IIMs, IITs, TEDx, PMI, AIMA, and CII conferences. He also runs a not-for-profit art and culture center and proceeds over rolling car society, which promotes technical awareness. He is an independent consultant and fellow of Institute of Mechanical Engineers, London. Let's hear his view on how India can elevate the railway industry to global sustainable business standards. Okay, so Make in India was started, as you know, in, when this government took over in 2014. The spirit of Make in India at that time was to do more and more manufacturing in the country to make India some kind of a manufacturing factory of the world. We succeeded to some extent. But after COVID, the government rejigged into Aat Nirbhar Bharat. Atmanbar Bharat with the expectation that these lions of Make in India would roar into self-reliance. The underlying idea to my mind is that mere manufacturing, you have to start with large-scale manufacturing, of course, that's a given. But merely manufacturing will not make India a global leader in on the industrial front. Any country which offers a lot of shops and land, logistic support and so on can invite people, firms to come and manufacture. That's good, but we have to look beyond. And looking beyond that means that you should develop your own product. You should develop your own technology. You should develop your own systems, your processes. And that, riding on that, of course, it has to be supported by large-scale manufacturing. Riding on that, we can hope to become a global leader. If you look at the trajectory of Japan in last 100 years or so and China in last 25 years, it started with manufacturing, it started with copying products and making it in the country. But they migrated to developing their own product. Japan, of course, did right from 1950s. And China has also done in last 15 years. China has its own products in in not only in railway technology, in so many areas. So the way Yahatmir Barbarat should take shape is that we should develop our own product. It may not be world standard in the beginning, but the only way would be up and gradually leverage these development of products in the country itself for a global footprint. That I would think is true make in India and the true spirit of Yahatmir Barbarat. So we are in a scenario where, if I can permit, if I can be permitted to say, is something like being mindlessly global and or hopelessly local. The truth has to lie somewhere in between. Wherever the gap is too large, like for example, high-speed rail. We cannot develop high-speed rail rolling stock in India today. The gap is rather large from our capability to a high-speed train. So we have to get somebody to hold your hand through a transfer of technology. But since we have large volume and we have a large economy coming up now, we must leverage this because we are the ones who are paying for it. We must leverage it to enable our people to learn the technology, not only in respect of know-how, but also know-why. With a clear aim, because there would be a caveat in the contract, that every design that you do has to be done with our part, with 
with us, sitting with us. This will enable us to, you know, uh, shorten that gap in a graduated manner. In respect of high-speed rail, for example, if we start today, I'm not sure we have started, by the way. I have, I'm afraid it's going to be more products in high-speed rail technology also. Where the gap is not that large, for example, train the, the range 200, 220 kilometers per hour. We have to challenge ourselves to do it ourselves. Because we have the capability, we may not have the experience, but if the government support is forthcoming, then world-class products can be developed in India. The Vande Bharat is not a world-class product. It's a near world-class product. It needs a lot of improvements. And given that support from the government, it can be done by Indian engineers. This is what I would say is how things should pan out in the field of railway engineering. And when you talk of sustainability, that I understand in two respects. One is, of course, to reach it at a level where it can be sustained at a level and rate that you have planned or maybe even expand. Or a larger understanding would be that it is sustainable aspects also. While designing, we must look for materials, we must look for processes and so on, which are generally green in nature. And the overall railroad system, if it can be more made greener, for which the government is taking initiatives, then taking it further, it was, you know, if we talk of Industry 4.0 and so on, I don't think we reached any appreciable level in there. Because the manufacturing, although was digitally enabled you know, on individual workstations and so on, but an integrated system of Industry 4.0 had not happened. It has its own benefits, as you know. And I'm sure that is something that is the next step for ICF in, in terms of its manufacturing capability. So for medium and small scale industry, there are many incentive schemes. And government is a big spender, as you know, it gives a... 20% advantage in procurement, and which is good. By and large, the pain point in government procurement is that although it is an enabler in terms of buying quality product, the government rules and regulations, its own working becomes such that there is a tendency to go for the lowest bidder and the quality suffers. So one of the things has to be done is, since it will be very difficult to have a regime with the government control in which quality reigns supreme. My experience is that it won't happen. The backdoor privatization or upfront privatization to some extent in manufacturing is necessary. If you take railway manufacturing, India perhaps is the only country where manufacturing still is largely in government. Some steps have now been taken. Large contracts have been finalized for for private parties to come and build a railway workshop, which is a good model. It's not full-scale privatization. So I called it privatization through backdoor, but it's, it is something which I appreciate is being done. It, it, since quality products are going to be a necessity, more and more manufacturing should be freed of government control. If, if not direct con government control, at least freed of, can retain some indirect control like people, uh, companies coming and manufacturing government premises, but, but not direct control of government. The, the general recall of an Indian railway strain over the <laughs> decades has not changed. Color has changed from red to blue and so on. But the modern trend the world over for last 25, 30 years in this speed range is to have a train set which is without locomotives, we are, has no power cars. All equipment is on the train itself, under the board, preferably. And all the space above is available for passenger amenities. And since all coaches are of the same shape, it can be aerodynamically profiled. And in fact, if we talk about that, rapid rail is not part of, it's part of the Ministry of Urban Development. They have adopted age-old thinking that since we must get ready made rolling star, so we should go for standard gauge. So they have gone for standard gauge. To my mind, it does not give any advantage. <laughs> it should as well be broad gauge so that we'll retain the flexibility to 
integrate the system with Indian Railways at some point. I'm not saying it should be fully integrated, but maybe certain last mile, first mile can be through an Indian Railway system. As for Vande Bharat, the idea was to employ the products of Indian companies, first of all. I mean, the design work in ICF, obviously, the design cost comes down. All products for the shell, all developed and manufactured in India. But in a train, a lot of complicated systems like propulsion system, control system, brake system, door system, gangways, so many RMPUs going to the train. And railway industry has developed much more than railways themselves in terms of their capability and technology. And that's the credit to the private sector. In all these fields, we have good Indian com companies competing with the best in the world. So that made our job easier. Riding on the shoulder of the capability of Indian industry, we were able to design and manufacture the train, keeping the cost pretty low. And then there was no technology fee involved as it would be involved if you were to import the train. So all these things helped us to keep the cost down. And therefore, since it was being transferred to railways only on basis of transfer cost, we were able to regulate it to about 98 crores at that time, 2018. Even today, I believe the cost of manufacturing is in the range of 105 to 110 crores. I'm not sure of that. So the strategy was very simple, fit, develop and fit Indian products. That was the strategy. We devoted quite some time to make the factory carbon negative. And the credit for that goes to one Mr. Das, who was the chief design engineer, but took special interest in making the factory green. So we already had windmills on the Tamil Nadu coast. And the gap between what we consumed and what we produced through regenerative sources was something he sought to bridge by installing solar power on la in large scale. So gradually we were able to do that in a exemplary to the extent that the power that we generate through regenerative means was higher than what we consumed. And they were other initiative taken by him in the factory and the colony, of course, he had full support from me to make the premises green. Chennai had suffered the Operation Varda in 2016 and a lot of trees had fallen. It was quite a tragic scene that time. So that you know, also propelled people to restore the environment there. So I'm happy to report that the there was quite a transformation in how we looked at the environment and greening in the factory. Uh, we covered it in a book called Greening of a Factory and the World and Makeover of Integral Coach Factory in its habitat. It was jointly written by me and Mr. Dash. It gives a fair amount, a fair account of how a large organization like Integral Coach Factory, 500 acres, 11,000 workers and so on, 3,200 houses, and two factories, large factories, how it can be made environmentally conscious towards sustainability and in terms of consuming power to make it carbon negative. Thank you. We request that delegates and viewers to stay connected with us on our social media handle. OEM update is available on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. You can also download our app from Google Play and App Store. With this, we want to announce the closing of today's session. Request you to stay tuned for more such sessions. Thank you and good night.